The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Did you have a good time at the U.N. yesterday, Tony? Oh, I sure did, Casey. Even attended a committee meeting. Hmm. But what did you say when they asked whom you represented? Why, Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, The Chivalrous Gunman. <laughs> Penrose Square in the daytime is a busy place. But now at night, lights shine behind a few windows of its old-fashioned office and loft buildings. And a block away, a construction crew continues to drill and blast a new section of subway out of the city's rocky bed. In the darkened offices of the J.J. Titus Company, whose business is private loans, there are three men. One is busily engaged at the door of a massive safe. Another holds a flashlight. The third lightly grasps a gun. How you coming, Gus? Almost ready to blow, Red. Hold that flashlight steady, will you, Rager? Sure, 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 Gus. <laughs> Got the shakes pretty bad, haven't you, Rager? I, no, I'm all right, Ed. You're so scared I can hear your teeth rattle. No. Oh, it's the guy's first job, Gus. Weren't you scared when you cracked your first safe? I was scared the first time I killed a guy. I've never been scared. How many men have you killed, Ed? Oh, you've got a lot to learn about the rackets, Riker. You must never ask personal questions, and you must cultivate a bad memory. I, I will. I got the charge in and all wired. It's ready to shoot after I rig my patent. You still scared, Riker? Well, sometimes people work in this building at night doing overtime. If the explosion is heard... I'm nuts. Nobody paying any attention to this blast. That subway work going on outside makes a perfect setup. I hope we find all the dough in that safe you say will be in it, Riker. There'll be at least $40,000 and maybe fifty. I work in this office. I know what Titus keeps on hand. It better be right. I don't like to waste my time. I told you, fellas, how much money my boss kept here. I showed you how to beat the burglar sure, along. Sure, sure, Riker. You've done your part. Back with the wall, guys. I'll touch her off. Right. Here, here she goes. The door's blown clean off. Sure. I know how to crack these boxes. Now we'll see. The thing is full of dough. I told you. Hey, give me that suitcase. Help me load it with this dough, you guys. Uh, you and Riker are loaded. I stay close to this hall door to watch and listen. I'm watching you guys, too, to see none of that dough sticks to your fingers. I want a full third of it. You'll get it, Ed. Sure, I will. Big bills and packages. Hey, there's all of 50,000 here. Yeah, we'll count it up when we get to the hotel and make our split. Yeah, shake it up now. We've got it all. Hey, let, let's get out of here. You carry the bag with my tools in, Riker. I'll take the money suitcases. Oh, why can't well, I... Gus tells you, Riker. Uh, sure, Ed, okay. Uh, but let's get away. Quiet now, and I'll open the door. Come on, there's no one in the hall. We'll go down the back stairs. Yeah, then it's only a block to the car and our getaway. Uh, quiet. Somebody opened the door. It's down the hall there. Th that girl. Oh. Don't scream, babe. Don't. I, I, I won't, but... Why do you point that gun at me? Mr. Riker. She recognizes me, Ed. She's a sonographer who works in that office. She'll tell. And if she told the cops on you, you tell about us. You gotta bump the scale, Ed. No. no I, I don't know what this is all about. Please. Quiet. Let her have it, Ed. This girl's coming with us. Coming with us? Where? I know a spot out in the suburbs. You're going to kill me? Now, take it easy, baby. Oh. Come on, we're heading down the back stairs. Oh, Ed, oh. you take her where you want to. Gus and I'll go to the place we agreed and on. take that dough with you? Yeah. Oh, no, no, Riker. The dough and me are gonna stick together. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, this is a good spot, Gus. Stop the car. Okay, Ed. You're going to kill me here. Sorry, sister. You worked late in your office on the wrong night. Let's get out. No, I'll never tell anybody that I saw you, man. I swear I'll never tell you. Mr. Riker, you know me, I swear. I... That's just it, Miss Birch. You know me and you could send me to prison. You're the guy who runs the biggest risk from this girl, Riker. Suppose you bump her off. Me? Uh-huh. Oh, no, I couldn't kill anybody. <laughs> okay, <I>... yellow belly. <laughs> How about you, Gus? You're strong for this bump off. I've done my end of the job tonight. This is your part, Ed. Yeah, that's so. Want to see me do it? No. Take her back there among those trees. Okay. Come on, sister. No, no, no. Let go of my hand. Oh, no. Please. Quiet. Now. Please don't leave me. Come on. That's a girl. <laughs> Just a few steps, babe, away from the road where the trees are thick. That's it. <laughs> and away from those two yellow bellies. Oh, I'm not going to hurt you. You're not. Quiet. I've been sizing you up, and I figure you'd stand by a guy who stood by you. I swear I'll never tell. I, I swear That I... don't convince me. I go by how I feel about things. Besides, I've never killed a woman. You're going to let me go? Uh-huh. Oh, I... Now, can it and listen. You follow this path for about a quarter mile, you'll come out on Weldon Spring Road, where you can flag a bus back to town. All right, get going. <laughs> Miss you. That's I... all. I'll fire a shot or two after you start for the benefit of those mugs back there. So long. Thanks. Thanks. I'll never forget what you. What I expect you to do is forget me. Get on your way. I... Goodbye. You can depend on me. <laughs> A swell double cross, eh? Hey, what the... Carson, I didn't trust you with that money. We followed you and heard everything you said to that girl. Well, you did, Riker? We did. And you have a gat in your mitt, huh, Gus? Yeah. Guns aren't your racket, pal. You're a safe cracker. I'll use a gat when I have to pay off a double crosser. That gal is never going to reach the bus line. And as for you... What about me? I'm giving you this. No, you don't. Oh. I said guns weren't your racket, Gus. You're too slow on the trigger. You... You killed him. I think so, Riker. Let's see. Uh-huh. He's dead. Oh. You never saw a guy get it before, I guess. D don't look at me like that, Ed. D Not don't much I... guts have you, Riker. You don't belong in the big leagues, and you wouldn't know what to do with Big Doe. So I'm taking all of what we got tonight. No. Not even a killer like you was going to take it from me. Oh. Shouldn't have reached for the gad. Poor Gus drop, Riker. <laughs> Guns aren't your racket either. Our story will continue in just a moment. For more than 125 years, we've all enjoyed good, wholesome beer and ale in glass bottles. Why? Because glass and only glass can bring you beer and ale as it comes from the brewery, unaffected by any foreign taste or flavor. Yes, glass bottles and only glass bottles can bring you beer as it's meant to taste. Beer that's brewery bright. And here at last is a new kind of bottle. A glass bottle that's different. It requires no deposit. No return to the store. When the bottle is empty, just throw it away. It's light as a feather. Sturdy and compact. It saves space in the icebox. It belongs on any table. It's a natural for picnics. And brother, what flavor, that real brewery flavor. Protected by glass. As only glass can protect it. Yes, the revolutionary new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle is sweeping America. For flavor, demand beer in glass bottles. For convenience, demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle, a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. That's how it happened, Captain Logan. I, I tried to tell you everything. Uh, now I... Now I... Uh... That's the end, Captain. Riker's dead, Doctor? Yes, it's, it's a miracle he lived as long as he did. 
Well, Logan, you got a big break. He gave you a pretty complete story before he passed out. Here's the swell break, Casey. But Riker didn't identify the killer for you, Captain. He said he knew him only as Ed. And the description he gave you fits thousands of men. Well, at least Riker gave me something to work on, Miss Williams. And there's this stenographer, Francis Birch, that the gunman turned loose. Logan, do you go for that part of Riker's story? A professional trigger man so chivalrous he takes a chance on his own hide by letting a witness go free? Mm Mm-mm. That's hard for me to swallow. Oh, screwy as this thing sounds, I think she got away safely. She'll be able to give me a good description of this killer. Women remember men. If the killer did let her go, and if she has any sense of gratitude, you're not going to get a thing out of her. Now, when she learns that her chivalrous gunman killed two guys tonight, well, as a reputable citizen... I'll or... bet she won't say a thing. We'll see. I'm starting to look for Miss Birch right now. <laughs> Captain Logan, the man let me go. He said he couldn't kill a woman. I ran through the woods, caught a bus, and came home here. He didn't follow you? No, Captain Logan. This is certainly a hot one, Annie. Mm -hmm, I'll say. Now, I've told you all I know. I've had a terrible experience tonight. Please leave me alone. I'm sorry, Miss Birch, but you haven't yet given me a description of this man called Ed. I can't describe him, Captain. It was dark all the time I was with him, and I was so frightened. Well, you must have some idea. I haven't. I don't remember a single detail of the man's appearance. Because you're too grateful to remember? I just don't remember. Miss Birch, this man's a professional killer. He murdered two men tonight. It was a cold-blooded murder, and it was a double cross. It's your duty to assist the police in putting him where he belongs. Duty can't make me tell you something I don't know. I wouldn't recognize him if he walked into this room. I don't know him. Okay, That's the way you want it. I'll have to hold you as a material and unwilling witness. Sergeant, take this young lady to headquarters. You mean I'll be a prisoner? You will be held for further questioning. Does the prospect improve your memory? No, Captain. I'm ready to go, Sergeant. Well... Yes, you win your bet, Casey. Hmm. Sorry, pal. I hoped I'd lose. Mr. Ebersole... To everyone who's come into this bar, I've been predicting that this here baseball season is going to end with a big surprise. Hello, Ethelbert. Hi, Bert. pal. Casey, Miss Williams. Excuse me, Mr. Ebersole. Where you been all day? Oh, hang around police headquarters. Uh-huh. Who's that guy? I'm going back there a in a few out. minutes. Uh, yeah, we've only got time for a small bottle of beer apiece, so give us some action, Ethelbert. Come Coming on. right up. You sticking close to headquarters, waiting for a break in that chivalrous gunman case? Yeah. Yeah, the thing's swell newspaper copy. The women especially are eating it up. Well, I'll say they are, Miss Williams. Every other femme who comes in here is talking about the killer who wouldn't hurt a lady. I think most of them are jealous of that birch gal. They'd like to have met such a romantical character themselves. Oh, romantical character nuts, Ethelbert. Those cookies don't do anything romantic or chivalrous. Unless they got a very cold, hard-boiled reason for it. She still ain't described or identified the killer, has she? Well, no. Which seems to prove, Mr. Casey, that he didn't take very big chances. He was simply an excellent judge of character. Mm, Maybe. The thing still has a phony smell to me. I don't see why, Casey. He sized up the gal and figured she wouldn't rat on anyone who'd done her a big favor. That's all there is to it. That's the way it looks, all right. I suppose the cops have investigated the birch gal pretty thorough, huh? Very thoroughly. And she's just what she seems to be, a plain-looking, capable stenographer. And her reputation is A-1. But, Annie, nobody knows her really well. She has no close gal friends. She never went out much with guys. The cops didn't find anybody she'd ever been confidential with. Well, so what? Girls in a wolf town like this are smart to keep... to keep to themselves. Yeah, well, she worked overtime on the night of the robbery at her own request, Annie. Mm-hmm. And her boss says that she's done that many times before. Yeah, I know. 
You got suspicions of Miss Birch, Casey? Well, I had, pal, but uh, well, there seems to be no grounds for them. Casey had an elaborate theory that the appearance of Miss Birch after the tightest safe was robbed was timed. Uh, timed? To make two of the robbers, Riker and Gus, agree to a change in plans. See, they'd intended to split the dough in a downtown hotel. Well, Francis Birch provided an excuse for this gunman, Ed, to get them and the stolen money out to a lonely spot in the woods where he could bump them off and take the entire haul. You figured Miss Birch and that Ed were working together, huh? Well, it was a theory. You mean a hunch? Yeah, only Logan can't find any connection between the Birch gal and any crooks. Hmm. I don't think it was a very hot hun- uh, theory, anyways. I guess Captain Logan's been rounding up a lot of suspects, huh? Every guy known to have associated with a safe cracker, Gus, has been brought in for questioning. The cops are still looking for more. Oh, well. Annie, come on, let's get back to headquarters. If anything breaks in this case, we want to be around. And you we'd know. better be. Your city desk will have our scalp. You know what I predict about this case, pal? What? It'll either be solved... Yeah? ...or it'll always remain a mystery. You and Miss Williams got here just in time, Casey. My boys have brought in another suspect. All right, so who is he? A Rob from Minneapolis named George Neal. He's been booked for several trigger jobs in the Middle West, but always got out from under. Now, he's been seen several times with Gus Lesser during the past couple of weeks, and he just might be Ed. Is, uh, is the name Ed one of uh, George Neal's aliases, Captain? No, not that we know of, Miss Williams, but that's a minor detail. An experienced crook wouldn't let an amateur like Riker know his real name or one of his usual aliases. Uh, bring him in, Sergeant. Yes, sir. In a minute or two, I'll have Miss Birch in to give him the once-over. Oh, she won't identify anyone for you. I watch that gal very closely when she meets the suspect, Miss Williams. When she sees the right one, she may tell me more than she intends to. Oh, you, you think she'll give herself and him away? Could be. Now, you and Casey, keep your eyes open. Let me handle this. Okay. Here's Neil, Captain. Oh, come in, Neil. Oh, thanks. I have a chair. You're too good to me. Well, what's this pickup all about, Captain? When did you leave Minneapolis, Neil? Ooh, about six months ago. Been operating in this town ever since? I don't know what you mean by operating. You did quite a little gun work out in the Middle West. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I fell up against a couple of phony raps that weren't followed by convictions. Yeah. Yeah. You pulled some jobs in this town, Neil. Have I? Mm-hmm. Prove it. I'm going to try. Bring in our witness, Sergeant. Yes, sir. You have a witness? Yeah. Here she is, Captain. What do you want of me now, Captain? Now, take a look at that man, Miss Birch. Well? Have you ever seen him before? No. You're certain? Certain. That's all. Take her back to her quarters, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Well, your witness didn't know me, Captain. I noticed that, Neil. Am I at liberty to go now? You're being held for questioning. Take charge of him, Martin. Come on, Neil. Okay. <sighs> you cops certainly waste an awful lot of time <laughs> having a thing on me. Miss Williams, yeah. Casey, did you notice a change in that gal when she saw Neil? Yes, Captain, her voice was calm enough, but did you see how she clenched her hands? Did you get it too, Casey? Mm, I wasn't watching the gal, you Logan. You weren't watching? Casey! I had my eyes on Neil. He wasn't at all afraid of Miss Birch. You mean, you think he's not our guy? I'm sure he is our guy. I don't get it. No, neither do I. All right, now, Neil was pretty tense at first. Because you just might have had the goods on him for any one of a dozen jobs. Well, that tension disappeared when he saw Francis Birch. All he showed then was relief. But, Casey, if he's Ed, he'd have had the opposite reaction. Of course, Ed met this gal only once. He couldn't be sure she wouldn't send him to the hot seat. Right. He couldn't be sure if he'd met her only once. Uh, are you going back to your cockeyed theory of collusion between that respectable woman and a professional rod man? Neil's a good-looking guy. He could have made a play for her after he learned about the big dough in Titus' safe. And she could have gone so overboard on him, Logan, that she'd play along with a scheme, even a scheme that involved robbery and murder. Well, that's just a hunch, pal. 
Well, there's no way to prove a hunch of that kind, Casey. She'll just keep on refusing to identify Ed. I think there's a way to prove it. Oh. Women are jealous, Logan. And when they go all out for a guy, they demand a lot in return. Yeah. How do you know so much about women, Casey? <clears throat> I've read about them, Annie, in books. Hmm. Say, we'll try the old green-eyed monster gag, Casey. Now, what on earth Now, you'll find out, because you're going to help work it, Miss Williams. Now, here's what we'll do. Beginning tomorrow, George Neal will receive special privileges in jail. He'll, he'll be allowed to have visitors privately. And after we're sure he's enjoying his privileges, Miss Birch's quarters and the women's wing will be changed so that she'll have a fine view of the private visiting room. And then, Miss Williams, you come in. <laughs> Williams. Nice of you to visit me. Well, it seems the least I can do, Miss Birch. You must be terribly unhappy here. That's an understatement. I'm not in a barred cell, but I, I'm in a jail. I'm a prisoner. How much longer are they going to hold me as a witness against a man they haven't arrested and whom I can't identify if they do? Well, I, I don't know, Miss Birch. But they're making things more comfortable for you. They've given you nicer quarters than you had before. Yes, they moved me in here today. Uh huh? Oh, this would be quite a pleasant room if it weren't inside a jail. Yes, but it is. Oh, that's interesting view from this window. Interesting? Barred windows, and stone walls. No, no, haven't you noticed the visiting rooms? There are a few floors below across the court. You can see the real prisoners with their relatives and friends. Oh, that'll be fun. That, um, that, that fellow, Neil. Is in one of the rooms now. Neil. Hmm. He's a good-looking guy. Uh, one of the men that you couldn't identify, remember? Oh, no, I, I've been asked to identify so many men. <laughs> Look, he's got a nice-looking girl visiting him. Yes, I see. Mm, she looks a little too blonde to be the real thing. He's definitely peroxide. Oh, I don't know what there is about blondes, real or phony, but they sure appeal to men. Who do you suppose that woman is? I don't know. She's probably a newspaper reporter like you, interviewing him. No, I know all the news gals in town, and she's not one of us. Oh. Oh, the guards come in to break up their visit. Oh, Neil must be a close friend. She's kissing him goodbye. Yes, so I see. Hmm, look at that. Oh, the guards shoot him out. Show's over. Miss Williams. Mm-hmm? I wonder if you'd find out for me... What, Miss Birch? Nothing. Never mind. <laughs> Oh, Miss Williams. Hi there. I meant to come back sooner, but I've been so busy. Oh, it's good to see you. It's good to see anyone who isn't a matron or a policeman. Oh, you don't look very well. Have you been sick? I... I haven't been sleeping. Well, I don't wonder. You're not really a prisoner, but just... I'm a... in a prison. I'm in a prison. Well, I... I wish I could do something for you. You can. Miss Williams. Yes? Oh, nothing. You know, I've, I've had some amusement watching people in that visitor's room you pointed out to me. That man, uh, Neil, I think you said his name was. Oh, yes, yes. Well, do you know that same blonde woman's visited him every day? She must be a relative, don't you think? <laughs> She's a relative, all right. I was curious enough to ask about her. She's his wife. His wife? Yeah. As she flew on here from Minneapolis. Wife. Miss Birch, what's the matter? He's married. He was married when he met me. Married when he made me do the things I did for him. All right, two can play his rotten game. Get Captain Logan. I'll tell him what he wants to know. George Neal is Ed. He's that chivalrous gunman. He's the murderer I love. He's the man who promised to marry me. Oh, I, I guess you've heard everything you need to, Captain Logan. Yeah, we heard, Miss Williams. 
And Casey wins another bet. This one, Logan. I didn't want to lose. We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. It's a funny thing, but nobody ever seems to have enough glasses. Attractive glasses, big, generous-sized glasses, particularly on these hot summer days and nights when you serve so much iced tea and lemonade. So why not put this note right on the top of your weekend shopping list? Six oversized sunburst crystal glasses for long drinks of all kinds. These new sunburst crystal glasses cost only 10 cents apiece at your favorite 5 and 10 cent store or any other store selling household glass. They're crystal. Yes, genuine crystal, with a beauty that can be compared only to rare and costly hand-cut crystal, the kind that mothers hand down to their daughters. Yet these sunburst crystal glasses cost only 10 cents apiece, only 60 cents for a half dozen, slightly more in distant cities. Now, you'll recognize them immediately by the distinctive sunburst design. But be sure to ask for sunburst crystal by name. Sunburst crystal, product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. The blonde tomato Miss Birch saw with Neil was just a police stooge. Huh, Miss Williams? Mm Mm-hmm. That's right, Ethelbert. Yeah, great job she has there. (laughs) After a couple of visits, their little get-together was worth watching. Those visits will put the chivalrous gunman into the hot seat. Yes. Frances Birch has given the D.A. a detailed account of her association with Neil before the robbery and how they uh, put on that act in the woods. I still can't understand why he needed her as an excuse to get his partners in crime out in them woods. Well, Ethelbert, Neil has a screwy quirk of character, pal. Unlike most professional gunmen, he couldn't shoot a guy unless he had some pretense of self-defense. So he planned things so both Gus and Riker tried to get him before he got them. Hmm. Pure vanity, Ethelbert. A manifestation of the protective ego with which all males cover their shortcomings. Uh, say, Annie, how do you know so much about men? Not from reading books, Mr. Casey. (laughs) Huh? Prime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deets. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>